Hello. I'm just making samosas right now. Okay. Would you like to see? I would love to see. Okay. So these are my, these are, this is the filling. Mm -hmm. And then this is the dough. And then these are my samosas so far. Wow. Ah. Delicious. Ah, I'm excited. So you're in Victoria right now? I'm living um, with some with some folks um, on Lodge Avenue. It's okay. They're kind of like introverted for me, um, so I think I'm looking for another place right now. Mm. Um, I think normally like it would be okay, but just with COVID, it's like pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you are you in Duncan or you're in Vancouver? I'm in Vancouver. How's that? It seems to be like everywhere else. Pretty quiet. Yeah. Pretty, uh, a lot of time for, I don't know, kind of what I do anyway. A lot of reclusion. A lot of times you're what? A lot of time for reclusion. A lot of time to work on things. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to maybe turn this back fan off. Okay. Yeah, I feel pretty lucky. Like I'm still working. I'm nannying for this like two year old in this family. Um, so that's kind of nice. I think I'd pretty much kill myself if I didn't have that going on. Yep. <laughs> not hanging out with people and not being able to go and do stuff is pretty hard for extroverted people. So yeah, but it's also like good for reflection, I guess, and like nice to, um, like I've got a guitar and like I'm doing like ferments and a lot more cooking and kind of stuff like that. So that's sort of nice, but I'm definitely like watching more TV and things. I think um, if I was with a different group of people, then I would probably maybe like be outside a little bit more, but um, kind of spending time with people and chatting is like really where I gain the energy for my battery. And I can't really find that unless I'm sort of, on like lucky days or something with like when my roommates feel like talking or hanging out. Um, otherwise it's just sort of like planned phone calls and stuff. But you know, then I can spend the days like I would never spend six hours making samosas on a regular day. <laughs> that would be ridiculous and stupid. <laughs> but for for COVID, it's fucking genius. Have you been having many Zooms like this with people or I don't really use Zoom. Um, like open phone calls and stuff. Um, my mom's organized some sort of like um, kind of video chats with uh, my our, her her brother and sister in law, my auntie and uncle. Um, they've got they live on a farm in Saskatchewan and they've got six kids, and we've video chatted and like played kind of card games and dice games and stuff together a few times. It's been really nice. Yeah. During like the first week and a half or so, I spent lots of time trying to like I talk to Kevin um, for like two and a half hours or something in Regina. Um, I don't know if you remember him. He was pretty close with Lorien. Um, April lived with him for a bit with Eric. He's bald. He works at the um, gas refinery in Regina. Okay. Um, and he's got a son, Tucker. Um, just sort of, so I spent like the first like week or two, like kind of reaching out to old people and having chats and stuff. And it was, that was really nice. Um, but I feel like I've gone to sort of mild forms of adaptation, um, where it's, it's sort of like I hit like mini breaking points and then all of a sudden I can kind of readapt to this, to the scenario. Um, but I definitely have like um, at least like a breaking point like every week where I kind of have to readjust again and again. Yeah. How many friends do you have in Victoria? Like really, like friends that I would call really close? Yeah. I would say one. Um, and I've got, but I've got like a small group of friends that I would feel like very comfortable calling and hanging out for the day. 
Um, but yeah. I don't know, like having my close friends is kind of a weird thing. Like when I was in Tofino, I was only there for six months, but like for people that I would consider close friends, like half a dozen or so, but I've lived in Victoria lots, like probably in total two and a half years or something. And I, I don't know, I've just never, it's like a nice city, like balance between small and big, but I've just never really been able to like hit a group of people that I felt super bonded to. Did you end up meeting Mr. Yogi Shambu at all? Did you? No, I forgot about that. That was when I first got here. Um, we had messaged back and forth and then I kind of thought that I was not staying in Victoria and then I've never, yeah, we never actually did get in touch. I, I forgot that you gave me his contact. He, he may be, he may again be someone to, to meet because he's, he knows a lot of people in Victoria and he's very sociable and uh, he's got a good crowd of people around him. So nice. I want to re, re look at that. Yeah. I, like, I feel pretty confident that if all of this wasn't going on, that I'd really be able to, um, I think, like, find my mark. Like, I had some sort of, like, random meetups and stuff like that with people that I really felt, um, like, an instant connection with. Um, and they're more um, sort of, like, festival, theatrical, kind of, like, queer housing sort of vibe people. And I was, and I drive with them a lot, but, like, a lot of that's just on hold. So it's sort of a weird thing. Yeah, I always thought that when I was going to be like bunkering down for a place for like a year that I'd be able to have all the time and resources to get into the stuff that I've not been able to. And I, and it's kind of working out that way, but just not in the way that I expected, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone expected this all to happen. I was, um, I had a chat with my mom about the session that she had with you. She said it was quite good. Yep. It's like yep. a basic, um, map section. She didn't, session, she didn't tell me too much about it. Um, well, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple thing because, you know, in here you're, it's very contained and essentially as a facilitator, you can take a group through, uh, an exercise pretty easily and, uh, yeah, I'm finding it very fascinating, interesting. You got two teams right now going. And, you know, four people is nice, it's small. And uh, everyone gets a chance to kind of get their turn to speak and it's recorded. So it's it's sort of a, an archive of what is occurring because, you know, it's what I see happening is just more and more teams making more and more sort of larger teams and making shared knowledge communities, right? And that's the essential plan of building a new infrastructure. But it's, you know, it takes time. <laughs> it takes time. But right now I'm working on a, a chat room software that is very unique. Mm -hmm. uh, bring the conversation cards into chat rooms and program them and have them very kind of specialized as to what can happen. And so looking at how facilitator can take a group of people through a chat room experience that is different from sort of exists right now so that's i've never kind of looked at the chat room as the main reference point i was always looking at the video and videos are very you know sort of static in one way but a chat room is like the basis of people talking together so yeah. i'm working with a programmer in new zealand who's uh, sort of basically take i send him a design and he's He's doing the programming and we're just going back and forth. And so we have a bit of a prototype uh, and looking now it's sort of, I know like he's got to go back to work in a couple of days. So he's had a lot of time to do some programming and now, now he doesn't. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I think he's going to China. He got, he met some woman and fell in love and they got, Gonna get married or something? Got engaged within a month of knowing somebody? Oh, whoa! Imagine that. Within a month, then you get engaged. Uh, I think it's just a, more of like enjoying life and enjoying the way that it feels in the moment, kind of having a good time. I mean, I don't know. That's when I hear about stuff like that. I don't ever actually think that people have like obviously thought it through or being super serious about it. He's like, let's do it. I love you. 
which is great. Like, I think that that's a good thing. You know, I think like that's wonderful to be able to have that any time in your life that you feel that that's something that you can do. I mean, wh- why not go for it? Who gives a fuck? Like <laughs> really <laughs> most relationships and marriages fail anyways. Why not like do it when you are completely infatuated with a person and then see if it's a train wreck or not, but who knows, maybe it won't be. <laughs> and if it is, it's a great story to tell. <laughs> well, I think timing has a lot to do with it. I think if both people are at a time in their life where they want to try it out, uh, then people jump in. But I don't know about you, I, I just never believed in relationships enough to, to think that was a good idea. No, I don't know. I'm definitely just like, I've, there's so many questions in my mind about that. I know I've like never had a serious relationship, like one that I would call a serious relationship that would, that's like, that's like intimate. Like I've definitely had like serious friendships, but like I'm sort of this like oddball or I feel like I'm at like the fort, no, like, I don't know. I'm just like a late bloomer, I guess. But I was also like, so completely like unconcerned with that matter. Like when everybody else was like, it just like, it wasn't even like a wisp of a thought on my mind. Like I was just like having way too much fun in life for forever. And I was like, what, why would you, what? No, like, let's do this. Who cares about anybody? Like, let's go have fun. What do you mean relationships? What is, no. And now I'm like, uh, I'm not having that much fun. Like, should I, did I like mess this up or something? Oh God, everybody's had so much experience. Nobody's ever going to, going to want to be with me because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with, I've learned so much about relationships and read so much and talked to so many people, but like practical knowledge, <laughs> lacking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's uh that's funny it's just like basketball right it's like if you watch a lot of basketball and you read a lot of books and you uh think you know basketball but until you're on the court <laughs> until you're actually passing the ball trying to score yeah. you know basketball and i guess relationships it's a bit like that but i think every human has a pretty good you know natural instinct mm. Definitely, when people are infatuated with each other, there's a there's a, a definite. Uh, I don't think you have to know much, but certainly you're going to learn quick. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. that's a really good way to be able to put it. Yeah, because it's definitely yeah. There's so many much stuff that is like really just like human nature. But then I guess when you get to like the complexity of it, and you want to be able to do like have proper communication or like know how to be able to support and like there's so many things that you can um learn through trial and error um that isn't much necessarily like human instinct that really comes through life experience but, but I think a lot of that can come through things that aren't like typically within that kind of relationship dynamic I think that it's just things that you would probably learn in life in general and then you could apply it to that that would be useful and you know I don't know I think like 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 there's not one single way to be able to know how to like shoot a basketball or play basketball like there's a a bazillion different ways that's individual according to height and size and speed and brain and like you know there's certain stuff that can't be taught whatever and actually know that there is one real good way and most ways deviations from that don't do that well (laughs) (laughs) there's definitely certain rules that need to be followed that's for sure if you want to like be in a healthy relationship or be a good basketball player, you got to like one use basketball. Can't fucking be thinking you're playing basketball and throwing around a football. Yeah. That's not going to work. Unless you find some other retard who's also throwing around a football and you think you're playing the same game. Well, then hallelujah. You just found your soulmate. <laughs> How old are you, Lindsay? I'm 29. So I'll be, holy shit. I'll be 30 in July. <gasps> Whoa. Cool. Yeah. So you're just coming off your Saturn return then? Yeah, and I am like really grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. And I definitely like feel that that is like settling and ending. And that's so, that's really nice. Like I actually just feel like I've, um, even though I don't feel like I found like a, like the perfect sort of home setting and like, but I do feel that the, like the things that I was having a lot of hard time gaining traction for, um, I feel that there's like, I've got some like footing back in my life and that's really, really nice. 
like I'm actually able to like um like introspect and like find things that I personally want to be able to work on and like real ways that um I feel that I'd be able to grow which whereas before it was really just like the whole fucking ground just totally fell away from beneath my feet and there was I don't even think about growing like let's just try to fucking like brace ourselves for this shit that's going down (laughs) because that was my life for a long time and then it was like and then and then you hit the ground and then you brace yourself and then there was like recuperation mode you know don't think about growing and moving it's just sort of like figure out like what's broken and what's not and put together and what still works and you know kind of stuff like that and so yeah so like I really I do feel that um yeah thank god that that time is starting to kind of come to an end which is really nice yeah (laughs) is that I met you I think when you were what 21 yes that would have been well actually yeah, I think so. It was 20, 21 or 20, 20, 22. I think it was early 2022, I think. Yeah. Because we went traveling in the Gypsy Caravan in 2012. Um, and I, but, and I don't think I met Lorianne until maybe. Yeah, was t- yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter that much, but I think it was early 2022. 20, yeah, I really think that it's, like, not that much has, like, gone on in my life kind of since that, like, like chapter. You, you know, like, lots of obviously happened, like, uh, even, like, travel-wise and, like, event-wise, but I've just never um, – there's nothing that's been incredibly as impacting in my life as that period of time, and it's – become like a massive like reference point I think for just so many different things and there's a part of me that's always are you there yes I went down stairs and grabbed my charger and then plugged it in but didn't connect it to my computer (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> dreaming moments I really think <laughs> I like to convince myself that I'm like getting smarter during COVID because I'm watching a lot of documentaries <laughs> but I don't think so <laughs> like, I would really like to get into like more complicated situations where I can actually problem solve <laughs> one of my time is spent with a two year old so <laughs> Really like, don't eat that. <laughs> Just don't fall into the water and die. <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, yeah, hours a week you spend with the two-year-old. Um, I, I'd say forty. Yeah, it's full time. Some um, eight to five, and then um, half days on Fridays from eight to twelve thirty. So. Yeah, it's a little bit more than full time. Um, but yeah, she's a really good kid. She's it's the first time I've really like, um, like nannied, um, which is cool because I've always kind of wanted to give her a go. One to see if I actually like want it, want my own kids, mm-hmm. and then two to tr- sort of trial and error that if I did have my kids and I'd already have some stuff figured out, so I could try it on other people's kids and not mine. <laughs> um yeah and I'm, I don't know well yeah who knows it's not really I think I'm I'm okay with either or yeah I think I'd be pretty happy I think there's like a really large part of my life where I really thought that I would like that I felt like I should be a teacher because I think that I'd be a good teacher and kind of just like I don't know I just want to like live on the beach and surf and boat and like not give a shit about a lot of stuff (laughs) I just want to take it easy and have a good time it's like if I could have a job that like pays well I'm I don't know I'm kind of tired of putting myself in these situations or like having these like huge massive like reckon I don't know things I dream too big sometimes 
and it just like I put a lot of pressure on myself and I think I mean I don't know how my life will go or anything but I think of like a more sort of like simpler life is going to be a lot more satisfying I don't think I need to make it as complicated as I have but I probably if I tried to be able to make it simple I think it would end up being complicated but it's nice to be able to to start thinking that it would be simple and it's a lot less stressful. Well, what, what would be your ideal job? Like what would be your perfect situation? You no, know, just like something that's outside, something that's different all the time, like something that's hard, like that's challenging where I actually have to think, you know, I'm really good with people and I really love working with people and I'm good at like organizing people and like, like I really love like managing and that's something that brings me a lot of satisfaction, like large groups and sort of like events and stuff. Um, I'm really good at and, and like, I like being able to handle a lot of things at once and a lot of responsibility. Um, yeah, I like things that are hard because I find that most things are very easy. So I get very bored. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that could be a lot of things, um, but I don't really have like education or schooling. I guess so I don't know what that would be yeah but it just like I just I need it to be hard and challenging you need it to ask a lot of me but like not be stressful or overwhelming I guess but I appreciate the things that are difficult yeah what do you think what kind of answers does that give you how does this fit into your master plan <laughs> well Having a lot of reconsiderations on my own master plan. Um, I, I had a, a bit of an idea that most people that I've met in my life are somehow all going to come together in this plan and that I'm supposed to bring them together. And I, like you, I sort of maybe some sometimes think I should be in the forest alone and you know, hanging out with a dog rather than trying to change the world at all like it just seems yeah. now that now this sort of end game is occurring and i sort of th thought this was gonna this was the way it was gonna be and now it's happening it's, it's i don't know it's, it's like being a, a prophet doesn't have a lot of fun in it it's it's, it's uh <laughs> you say you're gonna go off the bridge watch out the bridge is gonna fall and then no one listens and then the bridge falls and then they all die and you're like oh shit it's not so good seeing something happen in the future where no one listens to you. Are you talking about Corona or what things specifically? <clears throat> well, just anything. I mean, the Corona. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, like just, you. <clears throat> you know, I, I always have a sort of conspiracy that this is a thing. So I always question the underlying reasons why something is occurring, especially when the corporate media is blaring at every two, every minute of the day for yeah. weeks. Anything, anytime that happens, you know, there's usually something somewhere else that's being hidden or, or whatever they're putting forth has some trick in it. And I don't think this is any different. I think that uh, there, there's a methodology to try to get things into a more controlled state but if they actually get the 5g network in the, the amount of surveillance and, and the amount of stupid stupid things like look at like there's so many stupid things happening now like the, the pressure on people economically and the amount of people in the world that don't have food and they don't have the money for the food and this is all coming as a result of whatever this lockdown is by design yeah and we as individuals don't seem to have much power to do anything right because we we don't you know we just we just want to live our lives we don't spend our entire life just fighting something that we can't win against but i think if we combine together if we get organized within a way of making a living and that's very different from trying to protest or trying to stop something we want to build something 
always seen you as someone, again, like with a lot of potential, but perhaps that potential has never been tested. And I don't know, it may never get tested. You know, I, I know a lot of people who have a lot of potential that have never been in a job, never been in a position really to use it because they don't fit. They just don't fit in that whole paradigm of thinking. And so they just make do. And so again, I, I think we have to design and create something for us all so that we can all actually utilize our potential. I'm sorry, hold on. What's that? Sorry, just hold on. I'm different. Um, sorry, you can keep going. I heard everything you said. You were talking about potential and use potential in people and workplaces and jobs that just didn't really fit. Well, and thinking that, you know, what I've been working on, you know, it, it's, it's a shared reference point. It needs to be shared by a number of people for it to actually work. Yeah. And, you know, not, not everyone or not many people seem to be that interested in language structures. <laughs> not that many people seem to be that interested in how their mind works and how that mind interacts to create communication, what kind of patterns are created and then how the mind and these patterns and our relationships are affected by them. I just haven't found a, a deeper desire to investigate the mind in many people. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I guess my reaction to that is um, irony because I've actually, like, I'm so fucking fascinated with how like neurology and how the brain is constructed constructed and how we actually make decisions and choices but then also like how certain like how the brain is so malleable and how like habits form and how like culture and society and then individual like health properties and then genetics and then also like our hormone levels and food consumption and all these different factors that contribute how we like make choices and decisions yeah i think that's something like i've actually considered about <laughs> going to school for it, not to like be a neurologist or anything like that but just like I think it's a very interesting topic to study especially like social eco economics and then history and and the, the history in that but yeah so I think I think that's like an interesting thing that's definitely like a, a match on that side between us I find it very fascinating on that topic um, yeah. Um, something else that you said uh, on, like, you were commenting on what I had commented, what I had said, and it was on, like, um, like running to the forest and just kind of saying forget about it type thing, not knowing exactly, like, how it's all going to go. I've always sort of, like, thought that um, what would be really successful is just sort of, like, not really, like, fighting a system that is... Um, I think it, it is impossible. I think it won't work. And I think mainly because there's so much time and history and people are invested in it working that have a lots of power. But I've always sort of thought that what would be successful is just like, like, cool, you sort of like do your thing, but then like um, finding kind of loopholes or like I've always sort of seen like the uprising of like an alternative society that exists within the current one and that they're like, and that they exist cohesively because there's common links that allow one to exist that still benefits. So like the one that runs right now and I sort of see it as like, like the common link kind of being around like food and consumption and um, energy production. And I've always thought that it's like, just like naturally from talking to people that I've met through my travels is that there really is like, like a generation that's born where they, we all collectively have the same dream of living in communities and growing our own food and harvesting and living off grid. And like, there's so many like key factors and the fucking thousands of people that I've met I, when I first, I always thought that it was that I was like unique in that way 
And the more and the more and the more that I met people, I was like, no, this is a thing that people actually want and that are like working towards individually within their life. And so I don't even think that it's something that needs to be like planned. I think it will just be something that happens organically because there's so many people that want the same thing. And that when we start to get into the point, like, you know, there's different agings and stuff. So people are at the point now where they're kind of like, they've got the money and they've had the job that they didn't like and but they're they've got the dream and like they're at the point where they're starting to like kind of invest into land and farms and stuff so like and this has not just been on this continent it's been like people that i've met in every single fucking corner of the world so like there will be like thousands 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 of mini communities and land plots that people work, will create to just make their dream life and i do think that naturally people will want to like get connected to each other that live in those communities and share resources and knowledge. And I do believe that it will naturally start to be able to happen. I don't even think that it's something that has to be planned or created. It's just going to happen. People are already doing it in so many different ways. It's not something that like you as yourself need to be like that. If you don't do it, it's not going to happen. I do think that kind of that what you make and what you have is something that can um, be very beneficial within all of those communities. And I think something that would be smart to focus on is on like how um, all of those communities would benefit um, from what it is that you do. And I think that if you kind of targeted, um, I guess those groups, but it's hard to be able to target them when they don't currently exist. But like as that as a as a focus of your target, you know, as the, as they begin to form, that somehow you've like infiltrated them, <laughs> and I think that that could be something that they'd all benefit from. Like even when I live in community houses and cities and stuff, the main thing that because of the values that I have and as a person and how I function, in like from Lorianne on being able to appreciate communication and clear communication and like certain formats that work every community house that I live in where people are community minded and they like, that's the thing that's in like their top five for sure things where they're like, this is what we need. Communication is always in that always, always, always. And if it's not in there, then it's not community minded. Every single house I've ever been in, if they are community minded, that is something that they think about and value for sure. Hmm. I've kind of thought of, uh, of connecting the community houses together in a sort of uh, shared knowledge community idea you had let's say eight people one from each community house in a zoom call like this you know once a month or once a week or something um, I just I, I agree with you everything you're saying I think that there's a there is going to be subsystems within the larger system that work within the larger society, but are sort of doing their own thing more and more. I just think that the ability to organize needs a sort of like, a, like what, what I'm looking at is teams of four, and then five teams of four make a team of 20, and then seven teams of 20 make a shared knowledge community of 144. And for people, like, I don't know if you've ever done online gaming, the most organized people in communication are online gamers. Yeah. A lot of people in the house where I'm at right now, they're online gamers. Um, yeah. It's very sophisticated and they're, they're all directed their attention at playing a game together. Yeah. So they have a central focus. They have something which, which connects them. And that's the thing missing from regular life is that there isn't a kind of like game that humans humans like to play games they like to score points they like to know how to score points and part of again what i've been working on is, is a way to make your life a game mm. um, and this software system i'm thinking could be the way to bring it all together everything i've been working on could come together particularly in just having the reference point of bringing people together into a chat room and facilitating a specific type of conversation that wouldn't happen without the facilitator and the tool. And looking at that being a, particularly a job as a facilitator. Mm. As I said to you, you know, 25 people pay you 
you know, uh, for an hour of your time, you have four people, that means you're making $100 an hour. So if you use that as the basis of what you're going to do, you know, and then you do that 10 hours a week, you, know, you got a lot of time for your creativity, you got a lot of time for other things. But I think people, the normal economic system, you know, you need a lot of training or you need a lot of education or you need a lot of infrastructure to start to make 100 an hour in most cases, right? Most people are under $30 an hour even if they go to university for four years. Yeah. Professionals that are making a lot more than that, you know, it's, it's, it's like there, there, there's a big divide between people doing the labor jobs and people doing the, the high technology jobs. Yeah. Group people together and you don't charge them as much. It's basic math, right? I mean, someone can't afford 100, but they can afford 25. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. I think yeah. I mean, just looking basic economics, I mean, if you can train people to make $100 an hour online, you know, most people <laughs> think would be nice. interested in it, right? Yeah, that'd be amazing. The amount of like freedom that would come from that. So that's what I'm proving it now. I've got a couple of teams and now it's, I see it. It's easy. It's just, you know, I've got 25 years of knowledge to pass on and it fits together in pieces. And the only way to get it is a, is a, is a piece at a time. Mm. And I'm getting really good feedback from the people that are learning it. Cool. So I think the initial people that are going in, everything that I'm doing with them, they can do with whoever you're going to share, you know, teach on your end. So if I teach you a math online, that's a math that you can teach with whoever you want. I think that it's like, um, yeah. Mm, that's really interesting. There's always like, so funny because a lot of the stuff that you, that you say falls, <laughs> falls in line with the stuff that I've always like thought about doing in my own life. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. I remember years and years ago, um, the very first time I ever came into Victoria, I remember getting this like really weird feeling of like me, just, like kind of sitting in this house and <laughs> like, it sounds weird, but like, anyway, like, I, and I was a lot older, like maybe in my like, what, year kind of something like that it's a lot older than what I am now and just always feeling like um that I just had like tons of money and my life was like very easy and that I had done something and I'd always had this picture of like a kind of like round um like a dome type building I don't know exactly where that comes from but um I think like your things would do really well for like advertising marketing within the festival community. I think that that's like a really like large, large market of people that would highly, um, that people would really like it and it would be received really well. If there was like a workshop that was done within festivals or even like, um, like tours that was done between facilitators where they would kind of switch off and be able to facilitate within festivals, spend a couple of years like going around and heading festivals and then, like a client base on that would get really big, really fast, I think. But you, I think you'd really have to be at that point where you were sort of like, like ready for it almost. I think it would, a lot of people would be very interested or maybe it would just be like the perfect amount of people. Like you never know, but it would be something that would, yeah. Even just starting at one, I guess. And then working your way up to being able to do lots and like you could do like international festivals for sure. Like that would be something at one point that could, you really well. It's funny because I've always, I've always thought, I always thought that I would be in the circus if I were to do something like that, and I would do like performances and other things. But I've always like in my life known that a time was going to come when I was probably going to go around and be with festivals, um, just because like it's highly creative, highly artistic, music workshops, stuff like that. Like that was my big dream has always been to. Like if you could take a festival and the concept of a festival and the people who manage and organize a festival, but then turn that into what we see as these sort of um, communities that turn it with to in like a permanent type setting, 
like the freedom and the music and the individuals and the freaks and the weirdness and all these people who, you know, there's like the drug aspect, but if you could take that, but then um, take it into like permanent structures and then learn to have people who knew how to build a garden and have like permanent garden settings and then have like renewable resource, like energy onto the sets of music festivals and, in, and then have people like working on those sites year round and then hosting workshops and selling their art and doing music performances and take, taking classes and courses of like woodworking and metalworking and like all these things that they know how to be able to do like artisans and teachers teaching people how to do gardens and take like all that kind of stuff and then once you're having people and throwing this like massive fucking party that was like a festival but then every other year it's like a different kind of setting that's a lot I've always thought would is like a way that communities would get formed if music festivals could get behind growing gardens on site and having that be a permanent site. I agree. I agree. Uh, so, so anyway, so I mean, this is just, to me, this is like an archive of our first chat. And what I want to do is show people to go from nothing into a whole different world and archive it and see how simple it is and see it's just a, a, a one conversation after another leading people into a, a whole different way of thinking and communicating together by using these tools and so you you've had the card set for a little while and you you, you know a little bit about it but i think if you had re regained the inspiration and saw a simple path of how to perhaps participate to a stronger degree. Uh, anyway, I, I think there's a lot of potential there and I've always seen it and I've sort of waited for it. And it just seems like it's getting close. This is the year where at least I'm getting seemingly a bit into the real world and ready to bring my work into the world. And so I, I hope that you are part of that in some way. I think it would definitely be a good match. I'm on board and yeah, let's, let's see how it goes, Elijah. You've always been in my sights for a long time. So, so the, next, the only thing that we can do, I think is like start doing classes, you know, it's like that's definitely first step. And I think that that's the first step that I'm willing to be able to take for sure. Okay. So then we have to find three other people to go with you, either from your end or my end. And, um, and then there's three more teams. There's three more teams of four. I'm going to do one per day, okay. uh, one a day. Um, and then after that, help people, you know, to get you going and to get basically the idea is to, is to design your ideal job and to then have everyone working towards helping everyone to create that within this infrastructure that we're building. Okay, so it's um, one class a day, or how, what's the... No, no, I mean, right now it'll just be one class a week, just one yeah. hour a week. Yeah. Where you pay $25 with three others, and then yeah. you, you create a media team, and then from there, everything else is going to blossom. But it's, it's, you know, just very simple. It's just like $100 a month, and then the goal is probably within about nine months that you'll be doing the same thing. Okay. Wow. Crazy. How do you feel? Well, it's just, you know, I, I've imagined this for a long, long time. And I, I always thought it would be taking off a lot, a, a long time ago. And, and one cannot, as an inventor, you're, you're just, you're seeing things ahead of other people. And, and yeah. the frustration of things not being where you think they should be kind of gets in the way. And now I've come to the point where my, I, I've been so sort of uh, stopped yeah, at some point everyone kind of stops yeah. you stop long enough you kind of all the artificial desires go away and then what's left is just kind of like this this very slow methodical turtle that just kind of you know you're not the hare anymore you're just the turtle and you're just taking small steps but you you're not being distracted anymore so that's where i'm at i'm a little turtle 
speaking my language there. <laughs> yeah, that's really, it's a really cool feeling. I like nothing has really happened, you know, like life has slowed down so much, but also at the same time, there's so many levels of appreciation for that because I, at the same time, feel like I've accomplished more in these last couple months than I have in a long time like in my personal life is not expected. And I think that has to do with the fact that it's like, I'm so easily distracted by so many things and that, um, you know, being able to go slow and just like, not like have any distractions is really good for being able to focus on the stuff that you've always wanted to be able to focus on. You know, there's not like all these crazy, exciting, cool things that are going on in life, but the things that are going on are things that I've had on my sites for a really long time, but just have not like, if I don't have to sit down and do it, I probably wouldn't, you know? Like the idea of learning guitar, nice and fun. Actually sitting down almost every day and learning it, it's completely different. Well, the, the dreams of youth get tempered by the reality of experience. <laughs> okay, so I think we're just coming to the end then. Good. A bit of agreement to move forward. And then I will do on my part to uh, to make that happen. Okay. We will get a team uh, as soon as possible. Okay. So um, for the team, do you have people in line that you think that you'd be able to do it? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, I, I've sort of been waiting for, you know, these two teams came to meet. Okay. And there's a third one sort of on the... Horizon. This is this would be the first of having one person and going. Okay, I've got one person. So now, let's go look for three more. So we'll we'll see between the two of us maybe. Um, have you uh, when you met Joe Lee, did you just have one meeting or how was your guys's like how receptive was she? Maybe she's a potential. Well, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. We yeah. had two meetings and I thought they went very well. And the second meeting, Jordan, a friend of mine, was there, and and then I I didn't I was waiting for her. Yeah. And nothing of her. She never got back to me, and then I sort of forgot about it. But well, this, she sometimes falls off the map. Um, she can like she gets really into stuff that um she kind of has going on, and sometimes like I don't even hear from her for long time and then she'll randomly call me and we'll kind of touch base and stuff so it kind of depends i could sort of ask her where she's at now and kind yeah. of see what, what. why don't you contact her because she she would make a great team member i think yeah and she's she had enough good. interest for it yeah and i know that she was going to be moving to quebec too she's um, there now. but yeah. she's there now yeah okay okay so may, maybe she's a uh uh team member number two okay so uh, why I'll see where, she, where she's at and then kind of go from there. I'll kind of rack my brain and see if I know anybody who I feel like would be able to jump on board or be curious. Okay. Um, and do you feel like, do you want to set a time frame for it to start or just sort of like, we can touch base maybe in like a week or two or something, kind of see where well, we're at? I think if we both, if both of us put some effort in and uh, I think on your end, it would be funner to find people that you know and love and want to do this with yeah it, it, it actually is something that you know that you can have a lot of fun with but and, and you you know a lot of lovely people so anyway can we'll, we'll, my mom's team or no what's that can I be on my mom's team or no no they, they've already got a team <laughs> okay okay so how about we'll just uh, play by ear and let each other know uh, uh, if we have someone else and then at some point we'll set up a weekly schedule and then stick to that schedule. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Well, wonderful to see you. And uh, this is step one and we shall go forward. Sounds good. Much love to you. Bye.